Hey friends, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Ian with Out of This World Reader, and today's video is going to be a wrap up for the month of May. Overall, just a great month of reading. Last month was really great, and this month was just outstanding as well. So I just can't wait to just dive more into depth with just the books that I fell in love with this month. So stick around. <laughs> I've got quite a few books to go through today, mostly because school, the semester thankfully ended and I just was so happy with the way it ended that I just dove right into some books that I fell in love with and like overall the rating for this month was just top notch. I think like I have two book of the year contenders and then the, like the overall rating was just like four and five stars, like it was just great. The first book that I finished up actually I carried over from the month of April and that was for a discussion on Raoul Reed's channel so I'll make sure to leave this video. But that was The Engineer Chronicles of Acteon Story by Darren M. Hanshaw and I was really kind of disappointed by this book sadly like I had it like it had everything I was looking for initially going in like following kind of Acteon an engineer who's kind of living in this kind of world that's like it's surrounded by ruins essentially and there's this city in this giant pyramid and everything I was just so intrigued by that it was almost like a mix of just like Skyrim and Fallout but I really enjoyed the beginning and where it was going and then throughout the middle it really seemed to kind of drag on and it just like slowly started to let me down like it would almost like go off on these little side quests but I did a book chat on this as well, so I'll make sure to leave a video, or a link to that video. But overall, I gave this 2.5 stars, and I think, like, this could be a really good read for someone who is looking for something like that, but, yeah, I just, it wasn't for me, sadly. The next book that I finished was an audiobook, and that was A Sandman by Dirk Maggs and Neil Gaiman, and it was outstanding. I gave this 5 stars. It was an easy 5 stars. I have a book chat coming out for it very soon. But overall, like, I hadn't really kind of heard of the Sandman before. Like, he's a DC kind of superhero or character. I had heard a couple things about how great the audiobook was, so I kind of took a chance and kind of picked it up as well, and it was outstanding. Like, I loved it. Like, it was narrated by a full cast of characters. But it followed Lord Morpheus as he is kind of kidnapped and held in captivity for like 70 years, and he somehow escapes. And it just follows him through his journey as he kind of tries to bring back power to himself and gain back his tools of kind of magic and just the journey that he goes through. And it is very dark and horrifying. It was terrifying at some times. Like one episode takes place in hell. So that'll tell you something about it. And it was just like some of the scenes and brutality and gore and all that. Like it was like horror horrifying just but I'm a scaredy cat so know that going in but overall like I can't recommend it enough like it was just great it included like a lot of mythology and other folk tales it mentioned like William Shakespeare and all of them in some episodes but it was almost like I was just watching like a little mini series on like a superhero or something or watching a movie that's how great it was with like the sound effects and everything playing out so definitely check it out if you haven't it also inspired me to pick up the comics and dive more into just the Sandman in general. He's become one of my favorite characters in the DC Universe. I think him and Shazam are the ones that I really like the most and I can't wait to just dive more into this. Already looking at it like the pictures and stuff in here are horrifying as well. Like they're pretty close to what I was imagining when I was listening to the audiobooks. So continuing on with my Harry Potter series I picked up the Chamber of Secrets and this one, just like the Sorcerer's Stone, was just as great as that one. But I think so far this one has been my favorite. I can't wait to just dive more back into the series. But anything involving magic and sorcery, wizards, witches, all that kind of stuff, like I will, I think I will enjoy. But to me, this one just seemed a lot more spooky and dark and fast-paced, in my opinion, compared to the Sorcerer's Stone. Like we got a hidden chamber somewhere on Hogwarts. And there's something sneaking around, kind of freezing people, so like, 
it made the stakes a lot higher and I just loved this everything that was going on with it. I loved how it kind of expanded more on Hogwarts and then you got Dobby of course. Dobby has become a favorite character. He's just hilarious. Like you'll you'll fall in love with him from the first time you meet him and it's really early on in the book and I just I can't wait to just continue on with the series. I've heard great things about the Prisoner of Azkaban and there was one thing I just wanted to mention about this book. The one scene, I can't remember, like Nocturne Alley, when Harry kind of comes across Hagrid there, and this witch is kind of offering something. I thought it was hilarious when like Hagrid just like smacked those tray of cookies out. He said, get that out of here. That was one of the, my favorite, favorite moments of the book, and it was really early on, but that was just like, I just had to bring that up. Getting into more magic and wizards and all that, I picked up Uprooted by Naomi Novik, and this was another five stars for this year, this this month. Just overall great. Like I think I enjoyed this more than Spinning Silver. Spinning Silver had kind of like a deeper meaning to my in my opinion. This one had some deeper meanings as well. But this one was just like more fast paced and suspenseful. Like it was just like great the whole time through. Like it didn't seem to kind of slow down at all. I did a book chat on this. It's coming out soon. But this is centered around kind of like a world or folktale of these kind of villages that kind of rely on this mysterious dragon that kind of protects them from this evil wood that is kind of got creatures and all that kind of lurking around in it and they rely on this dragon to protect them. But he requires a price and every 10 years he requires them to offer up a young girl to kind of serve him in the tower. He doesn't like harm them supposedly or anything like that. He, they just stay there for 10 years and then after those 10 years, they never return to the villages. So there's a lot of like controversy about like what goes on there. And Agnieszka is worried for her best friend Kasia because she is like the perfect version of what the dragon wants. But the dragon doesn't select her at the kind of ceremony. He selects Agnieszka. And we just follow them as they kind of uncover more truths about the wood and like what is really going on with it. And I really enjoy just the magic involved. It's very similar kind of like Agnesa kind of like sings for her music, music and they use like alchemy and everything. It was just really great. The wizards and witches like they play a strong role in this kingdom. Like we had one that's called like the Falcon and he's more of like a war magician. I really enjoyed him like they all just were all so different unique and they had different abilities but just like anything like I mentioned witches wizards I will be on board for so definitely go check out my book chat on this because this I believe is a book book of the year contender right here I finally got to one of my book of the mysteries picks and that was house made of dawn by N. Scott Mamade I listened to this as the odd in an audio book I mean, it wasn't too bad. I didn't enjoy it that bad, like that much. Like I definitely enjoyed how he kind of painted the beauty and the landscape of just the Native American culture and everything going on. But I was struggling to kind of figure out what was going on, like initially with Abel and kind of how his struggles, like it definitely touches on some deeper meanings and kind of alcoholism, alcoholism and kind of addiction and that kind of stuff. But I just like wasn't able to kind of follow it very much because it would seem to kind of like switch perspectives and stuff like that. Like without telling you and I was just lost a lot of times. So maybe I need to just go back and listen to it again or actually read it physically and see if that changes because I've heard a lot of great things about this but I just wasn't on board with it for some reason. I ended up giving it three stars. Like it was still great. Like the beauty that he kind of crafted, it was very whimsical. I just I wasn't able to connect with it. I picked up a sci-fi book this month as well. Actually, I picked up a couple sci-fi books, but this one was The Year Before the End by Vidar Hopestead. The author and the publisher reached out to me for an honest review, and I did a book chat for that. I believe it already came out, so I'll make sure to leave that link, but I enjoyed it. Like it was it surprised me. It's only like 230 pages, but somehow he packed everything in there. Like it was it's got suspense, world building, kind of political intrigue, it's got it all, but it's centered around our solar system in the near future where the Centauri, this ancient, or not ancient, I said that in the book chat too, 
but they're these alien beings that kind of live in the Centauri system that offer this a bit like this knowledge of this gate system for the humans to kind of like fully kind of encompass the solar system and kind of move around more easily but they also give them plans to connect them to the Centauri and that kind of those plans are kind of going to be finished in one year and the gates will be finished but Captain Zara, a mercenary captain, has kind of taken on a job surrounding this controversy behind the Centauri and the Mars separatists. They're kind of wanting to take control of the whole solar system and split it between the two. So she was kind of hired on to break into the kind of um, the most heavily fortified, um, what's it called? Uh, I can't even say, not satellite, the um, station in the whole solar system and she's got to figure out some information so her and her crew the black rain they go in there and they're busting things up and they're trying to find some information but it's only 230 pages and somehow like it was really good like it was very similar to artemis in my opinion and some of other andy weir's books but it was really great i ended up giving it 3.5 stars i then picked up another sci-fi book and yet another whew, Book of the Year contender. It is Project Hail Mary by Andy Weir. This was this was an outstanding read. Another five stars. When I found out that Andy Weir was going to be coming out with another novel surrounding more science fiction that I really enjoy. It combines kind of real science and then science fiction as well. This one is centered around an astronaut who kind of wakes up on his spaceship with no memory of what's going on. And then slowly, as his memory starts to come back, he uncovers that his mission was to save humanity. And the rest of his crew are sadly not there anymore. So he has to figure out things on his own as his kind of memory comes back. And it was, it was like, it was a great time the whole th way throughout. I also did a book chat on that. I needed to figure out something about these book chats. But Grace as a main character was very interesting. Compared to the other ones, he was very similar to Mark Watney in The Martian and the plot was very similar in my opinion a little bit to The Martian but that didn't bother me at all when I've looked at some other reviews a lot of people were put off by that but I would still recommend checking this out because this one I think is my favorite out of all three of his books or all of his books that I've read I found a new favorite character that I can't go into because for spoilers sake but he was just the best. I also wanted to pick it up because Jeremy Fee really enjoyed this as well. He gave this five stars and I believe he thought that this was a book of the year contender as well. And he said that it brought tears to his eyes a little bit. And I've been searching for a book to do that as well. And this one did bring some tears to my eyes. I didn't. I don't think I cried, but it, it, they were definitely on the way. And it was very emotional and heartbreaking, heartwarming. It was just a great time throughout. And I can't wait to see what Andy Weir comes out with in the future. I will definitely be picking up more of his books. I think he's become an autobi author and I just can't wait for more from him. I then got to another most anticipated release for this year and that was Ariadne by Jennifer Saint. Doing another book chat on this, it's coming out soon. But like this was centered around the princess, the princesses of Crete, Ariadne and her sister Phaedri, who live on Crete with King Minos and their younger brother, the Minotaur. And they kind of, it just follows their journey through kind of the events that unfolded as Theseus is kind of brought from Athens as sacrifice to the Minotaur. And Ariadne kind of falls in love with him. And from there, just to make a choice to kind of betray the people of Crete or let her kind of or save Theseus essentially but it just follows the two different perspectives Phaedra's perspective comes in later on in the book but it mostly is centered on Ariadne and just like what occurred afterwards from those events and I really enjoyed how it kind of touched on a lot of other kind of mythology and myth surrounding the Greek gods and everything going on like I knew a little bit going in from school and Percy Jackson, Rick Riordan and all that. But these in here it really touched on a lot more. Touched on Diodless, I can never say his name, and Icarus, the kind of, what else, Perseus, Hercules, Orion, Artemis, 
I will say though that in the middle of this book it really seemed to slow down and I was curious as to where it was really going to go and that was really why my rating was lower. I ended up giving this four stars but then then the last 100 pages hit and I just couldn't put that in the book like I just had to figure out what was going to happen to these sisters and this one was another book that brought some tears to my eyes I wasn't crying I I can never cry but they were definitely there and I was just heartbroken as to what they went through very heartbreaking book and I loved how it kind of touched on how the women of the ancient world were kind of used and kind of abused by just men and Greek gods there in the myths and that were kind of told they're kind of portrayed as like evil like you think of like Medusa but it was essentially kind of Poseidon's fault so I just loved how it kind of secretly kind of touched on that as well this next book I haven't finished yet but I only have the epilogue left and I don't even know if I'm gonna finish it to be honest and that is The Ballad of Songbirds and Snakes by Suzanne Collins, which is the prequel to The Hunger Games, following President Snow, one of the characters I absolutely hate. And initially, like, when I was reading this, like, I was really enjoying what was going on. I, like, I think I liked Lucy more than Katniss. I don't know if that's controversy or not, but I really enjoyed her character. And I really wish, like, this would have been so much better if it kind of split the two different perspectives between Snow and kind of Lucy because I, could, I don't care about Snow to be honest like in the beginning like I was trying to feel bad for him but then he would do something and then that would just be lost and it was so hard to kind of feel bad for him for the things that he does but like come on now but it was following his perspective as he kind of is a mentor to Lucy in the like the tenth Hunger Games I believe and it just follows him through his journey as he's kind of trying to figure out how to go to university and all that. And no one really cares about him. But yeah, like I mentioned initially, like I was really on board with what was going on despite like not liking snow. I really liked the kind of the setting of the Hunger Games and everything that was kind of going on within the arena. And then the middle hit and the like, or not the middle, but like the last kind of 200 pages were not needed at all in my opinion like I, like I just can't go into it because of like spoilers but like it definitely could have just ended up or wrapped up a little bit after the games but it kind of just expanded on it and it dragged on and it was just like downer like it was really like this was going to be like a 3 3.5 or no like a 3.5 or 4 stars and then now it's going to be like a 3 stars because this last chunk of it has just been terrible i hate president snow more i hate the capital more but like it wasn't that bad of a book i thought a lot of people didn't even finish it to be honest because like i don't know why but i was a bit skeptical going in anyway but man if it was just like a little bit shorter it would have been so much better another audio book that was really great was daisy jones and the six i absolutely love that that was a five stars as well a lot of people have checked it out, I believe, and it's very kind of hyped up, and I really enjoyed the kind of the band aspect of it. And like, I was always kind of interested in the 70s band and kind of what's going on backstage. But in this, as an audiobook, I think it's kind of one of the best ways to experience it if you can, because each kind of character of the band is narrated by a different person. And it really made it seem like I was listening to like a documentary, but where like a documentary, documentary, where you just want to listen to. So it was just great. Overall, really like, really great time. I loved everything that was going on with it. So if you haven't checked that out, definitely go check it out. I will also be finishing up the Armies of Those I Love by Ken Lee. Really great audio book. Like I was really surprised by it. It's very short. It's only like two hours long. I believe it's only an audible, audible original though, but it's kind of centered around the sci-fi dystopia world in our world where kind of ruins are just everywhere and the kind of, there's these like mortal instruments, or not mortal instruments, mortal engine cities that kind of go around and they just have these kind of like, they're called like the guardians, which is like a mix of like machine and animal that go around and kind of clean up the ruins and the humans that are kind of living there are kind of hiding away from the guardians. They're scared of them. And it was very similar to kind of Horizon Zero Dawn, if you've checked that out. It's a great video game. 
but it was like very similar to that with like the machines and the guardians like it was all very similar and i really enjoyed it like it's i think it's going to end up getting four stars but just really short audiobook that i recommend anybody kind of looking for like a quick read really great but those are all the books i got to this month it just overall great month of reading and i can't wait to continue on in june there were several five star books two book of the year contenders so like it's just it was just a great month of reading and i can't wait to continue on please let me know your thoughts on any of these books that i got to i'll make sure to leave links to those book chats going more in depth with my thoughts and i really want to kind of get your opinion should i just do kind of like pick out like one or two books that i really want to talk out and just do one specific video covering those two books like a double book review or something like that so let me know your thoughts on that if you kind of have an opinion on that but that's all for today's video i hope you all have a great time a splendid day and i will catch you in the next video please consider liking and subscribing so you never miss out on another adventure and as ellie always says adventure is out there so i'll catch you next time bye